Happy birthday, Bitcoin. Nine years ago today, Bitcoin block zero was mined. People may be seeking to dilute the Bitcoin brand and seeking to set new ways of doing blockchain altogether, but everyone is facing the same scaling problem. And for the past nine years, all blockchain devs have been implementing improvements and seeking solutions, and we just don't know what to expect. So what can we expect to see in 2018? And where is this all headed? What can we talk about today that we're seeing in the news and what's going on in the market? Let's discuss. Hello everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr. You're you, and together we are minting coins. Your trusted source for crypto news, interviews, and ICO reviews. If you're new or not, tap that like button and subscribe to show your support. It helps us and it helps other people find this content. Uh, also, leave your questions and comments in the question comment box below as you have them so your voice is heard as part of the community. In this show, we're going to be talking about Bitcoin, Bitcoin's birthday, looking at block zero, where this all started and understanding how this affects us, how this affects our community and where this is all going. So let's take a look at the market overview, look at the news and let's discuss. I want to give a special shout out to Dan. Dan, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, to everyone else, Dan is out there and he is running this Telegram channel, the Whale Tank, uh, Whale Tank Crypto with over 7,200 members. This is a Telegram channel, a crypto community that has a substantial amount of people who are learning and sharing information about the ultimate cryptocurrency signals. So there's a, a lot of people who are a part of our channel who are watching this channel for news and commentary. Uh, at the same time, there's a lot of people out there who are interested in learning about trading. And we are not active traders ourselves, but we are interested in what's happening in the market. And so what's happening is that Dan and his team have Whale Tank, and so this is a free Telegram group that anybody can join. And uh, this is a cryptocurrency channel about signals and it's a free channel with these guys. They're old school, school traders. They have news, they have tips, they have tweets. They're helping people make up to 400% on single trades with their highly professional and experienced team. So if you uh, would like to know one for more information about the whale tank uh, on the Telegram channel, then feel free to click the link below. It's t.me slash whale tank. Uh, they are helping people with the tips that they're looking for uh, and the news that they're looking for to make great decisions. So if you want to check out uh, the whale tank, let us know if you have any questions. We would love to know what you think. And if this Telegram channel ends up providing you any value, let us know in the comments below or in our Discord chat as well. So going over the market report, looking over here at coinmarketcap.com in a world with over 1,386 different cryptocurrencies being listed, we have total market capitalization in excess of $700 billion. We were at $0.7 trillion, $41 billion short of us seeing a quarter, three quarters of a trillion dollars. It's just amazing how far we've come in such little time where this is going. This is why people are so concerned because of the growth in Bitcoin and growth in all of the cryptocurrencies together. And uh, what's happening is that there is apparently about $700 billion in risk, but the upside is practically limitless. The upside can go as high as possible. It can go to a million dollars, a, a coin, it can go to above a million dollars. Uh, and so the it's asymmetrical risk. There is just so much more upside and so much more potential with the cryptocurrency industry, the cryptocurrency markets, and the downside is currently limited to relatively small numbers when we look at the total market capitalizations of other things like gold or oil or dollars or just different markets and economies. Um, and so our Bitcoin overall of all of these cryptocurrencies, $700 billion, $709 billion total market capitalization, 35.9% of this is Bitcoin uh, with about a quarter of a trillion dollars, 254 
billion dollars in just Bitcoin alone. It's brought us up into our Bitcoin price back to $15,000 per Bitcoin. Max circulating supply, and we know it's way less than this, 16.7 million Bitcoins. It's just mayhem what's going on in these markets. If last year is any indication of what's going to happen this year, expect to see massive increases in a lot of these markets going into the spring and into the summer. And uh, I think that we're already seeing this when we're looking over here at Cardano. Uh, I remember we were talking about this when it came out just a couple months ago. This hit coinmarketcap.com at about two or three cents a piece when we first started talking about this. Now here it is, a dollar four cents each. I'm not sure if it makes sense for the Cardano, for the auto token to be at this price, but people are looking at this. They're seeing a low uh, per token price. They're hearing the news about Cardano putting information on the blockchain and having their way, their solution of what they're doing with their science and their technology. If we look at the top 10 coins from year to year and we can see how these coins have uh, changed because we can look at the history. There's a, a way to uh, check out the historical snapshots over here in coinmarketcap.com. You can see the currency converter calculator, get the historic snapshots. You can see the major gainers and losers for that day. Um, so you had a trading strategy where you only wanted to buy the losing coins from one day, knowing that there's going to be a, you know, a dead cat bounce the, the next day, maybe. That could be a trading strategy of yours. Um, overall, what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of opportunity here in the market, but at the same time, there's a huge amount of risk. Personally, some of the top coins that I think are most valuable are, of course, Bitcoin BTC, Ethereum, I think is extremely strong in the amount of success, the amount of people working on making Ethereum a, a world-class global product, and the amount of other tokens that are dependent on Ethereum makes Ethereum very strong. Uh, at the same time, Litecoin and Monero, uh, I think are very, very important coins for people. And so with that being said, when I look at the top 10 tokens or top 15 or 20 tokens that are showing up here in coinmarketcap.com, what I'm looking are at the fundamentals of the technology, the uses and utilities of the technology. And with the belief structure that I have in Litecoin being really progressive in the implementation of their technology to utilize technology, to be ahead of the game, ahead of the curve, uh, a lot of people supporting Litecoin and its integration with Bitcoin so people can hold Bitcoin as that store of value. Uh, because of the volatile growth and an upward trajectory that people are predicting. But then to be able to trade and transact with Litecoin gives Litecoin a lot of properties inside the ecosystem that in a future world of digital payments, of blockchain payments, really gives Litecoin a lot of strength. And we see here Litecoin is down. A lot of people selling Litecoin. I just think that it's undervalued. And I would say the same thing about Ethereum Classic, recognizing that everyone's talking about the next coin is going to get added to Coinbase.com. Coinbase.com is owned through the Digital Currency Group. The Digital Currency Group is run through Barry Silver. Barry Silver also runs Grayscale. Grayscale Investments runs the GBTC, Bitcoin Investment Trust, but they also run the uh, ETC ETF, the Ethereum Classic Investment Trust. So it makes a lot of sense that Barry Silbert would want the Ethereum Classic Investment Trust to go up and that because the Ethereum Classic technology is so similar to the Ethereum technology, since Ethereum is a fork of Ethereum Classic, it would be really uh, in the best interest of the Digital Currency Group and Barry Silbert to get Ethereum Classic for his uh, ETF onto Coinbase, which he also has a hand in managing. Uh, so that's where our money is at. We see this price dipping and decreasing as people are putting in their money into technologies that don't make a lot of sense, like Ripple, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, I would I would put on that list. You can you can hate me if you want, or you can love me for that. But it doesn't have the hash power, doesn't have the strength, doesn't have the technology, doesn't have the the devs behind it like Bitcoin BTC does. Not only that, but the the marketing ploy, the PR. A nightmare of them trying to steal the Bitcoin name without focusing on the technology is really says a, a lot about the intentions of who they are and where they're going. Moving into today's news, what I really want to recognize and what I really want to you know put a lot of thought to for everyone is that today is Bitcoin's birthday. Today, Bitcoin is nine years old. There's like the the pre 
embryonic stage that you know where, where bitcoin was just this you know thought of a white paper inside the belly of the minds of uh, satoshi nakamoto and several other people who that white paper was shared with uh, but the birth of bitcoin was really when block zero was mined and so um, just a little friendly reminder from our bitcoin is that here we are and we can take a look at this over here at blockexplorer.com we have block zero january 3rd 2009 we even have the time 1 15 pm difficulty one how interesting is that in the next block after block zero would have been block one and and here it is so the the birth of bitcoin it's sort of very interesting it's very exciting to recognize that today is the birthday of bitcoin and that bitcoin is officially nine years old today so just a birthday shout out blow out the candles and there we are as we were mentioning before what's not cool is people who are brands who are organizations who are seeking to dilute the bitcoin brand and take away from the bitcoin technology or distract away from uh, what Bitcoin has done or what Bitcoin continues to do in the world. Some of those players would be players like Ripple, would be players like Bitcoin Cash, as opposed to uh, a lot of other projects out there. Well, they're trying to fight for their own dominance in the market cap. A lot of them are trying to seek to be their own number one. Uh, they're still not seeking to destroy the technology or take away the, from the technology or dilute the technology as much as some of these other tokens and coins are. Uh, it's important for us to recognize that Bitcoin is the first. It's not just a, the blockchain technology that Bitcoin uses, but Bitcoin is the blockchain technology. Bitcoin was the first use, the first implementation of this technology. It has the largest in terms of brand recognition of technology implementation with the, with the mining and the hash power behind it, with the business infrastructure out there to support it, both in the physical world, in addition to the digital world and, and you know the exchanges, everything being hedged against uh, Bitcoin BTC with all of these different alternative currencies. Let's, let's just uh, recognize that Bitcoin is Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash is an altcoin, and there's definitely also a difference between uh, uh, Bitcoin Core, which is, you know, an organization of developers and Bitcoin BTC. Um, don't get distracted. Don't let the fear, the uncertainty, the confusion, the doubt, the FUD affect you and your perceptions. Don't trust me. Do your own research. Look into this a little bit more and just recognize the differences in the names and how different people are just trying to control the conversation with the semantics. And so don't don't be subjected to that. And so with that, I thought this was an interesting post on our Bitcoin that someone uh, on our BTC, so our slash BTC on Reddit, they are pro Bitcoin cash supporters. And then the folks at our Bitcoin are pro Bitcoin BTC supporters. And so someone posted on the uh, Bitcoin cash version of our BTC. I know it's very confusing, but that's how they're creating uncertainty and doubt in the marketplace because the Bitcoin Cash organization owns Bitcoin.com and they own R and they run R slash BTC. It's very confusing. But uh, anyway, someone went to the Bitcoin Cash owned. Uh, they saw that someone posted a Bitcoin Cash sticker, and I, I suppose they found the sticker. They say and they fixed it by having it say just Bitcoin. And so uh, in addition to the Bitcoin's growth, in addition to the Bitcoin's development, I just wanted to put out there, if you or someone that you know, if it's a friend, if it's a family member, if it's a son or a daughter, a sister or a brother, a parent even, who knows, someone in your life that is just trying to figure out what to do with their life, trying to figure out where to go with their life, the most important people in this space are the developers. The most important people in this space are the people who are looking at the code, reviewing the code, adding to the code, adding their commits, getting their commits added through the GitHub repositories. And uh, we're seeing this reflected with the salaries and benefits that developers are being offered in America and all around the world. We've covered these stories in the past before how Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, yeah, even J.P. Morgan Chase, all of these organizations, Fidelity, uh, all of these organizations are hiring blockchain analysis, blockchain developers, blockchain managers, uh, people who understand this technology and can deal in this technology to leverage, to pivot these existing organizations into this new industrial order. But not only are these 
traditional institutions fighting for this talent, but they're also fighting for this talent against these projects which have incredible upside, which have incredible potential. And not just potential financially, but potential to change the world. And so there's a dichotomy between money, of which everyone, in terms of the developers and these organizations, essentially, they're all going to make money. But it's not just about making money because everyone is going to make money. It's also about the course of the, of the direction that you want to take the world and that the developers want to take the world. And there's going to be just an increasing demand for these people. We've seen this in the past for traditional engineers and traditional developers all across Silicon Valley and technology centers and cities around the world. And this is going to include and then be superseded by these blockchain developers. And so I would highly encourage anybody who's interested in this technology, who has a you know knack for basic logic or basic math or just to take a look at solidity, take a look at the Bitcoin code, uh, to just take a couple lessons so you can learn uh, how to code in Bitcoin. I know Jimmy Sung out there has some classes. Go check those out. There's a lot of tools and tips online. Definitely check that out uh, because these salaries are definitely going to be increasing because of the rapidly progressing mentality in both the traditional financial sector and the world overall. An example in Switzerland, as this article points out, that the Federal Council is going to be following the developments closely in terms of the technology and development within their country. And then they're going to be um, proposing and swiftly enacting the necessary regulatory adjustments, if required, to help facilitate getting this, these mines, this talent, into their countries. And this isn't just Switzerland. This is going to be in Russia. This is going to be in Saudi Arabia. This is going to be in you know Dubai. This is going to be in Australia. This is going to be in the UK. This is going to be in America. You know, in these different countries, some of them are going to get on the ball sooner than other countries, but all of them are going to be rapidly increasing their interest and their development of these technologies, especially as we see Fed coins and fiat cryptocurrencies that want to start competing as well. And so here's this article from, or this uh, video post with Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, where in 2013, even Bitcoin had negligible fees, zero full blocks. And so it's important to recognize that you can't solve the scaling problems without scale. And a lot of these uh, alternative currencies are out there and they're seeking their own solution because they don't like the speed at which the Bitcoin devs and the, and the developers and the Bitcoin core and all the people who are developing for Bitcoin BTC, they don't like the speed at which that the scale is taking place, even though there's been a lot of roadblocks in the way from uh, Segwit2x and the Bitcoin cash fiascos and a lot of um, organizations delaying the implementation of Segwit and Lightning Network. It's just important to recognize that each of these technologies are going to you know, face problems with scaling. And this is why we're seeing so much additional capital go into the investment of the developers. And this is why we see so much attention going into the topic of scaling. And what we're seeing is that while there's a lot of smart people working on a lot of these alternative projects, Bitcoin and Ethereum have uh, a first mover advantage in terms of how much time and how much uh, they've put into solving this problem and being able to uh, grow the network while work on solutions. But I think it's really important that people have some sense of diversification in their lives and not putting all of their eggs in one basket and you know speaking to your own financial advisor for financial advice but with that being said you know saying that bitcoin isn't going to be the number one altcoin or the number one coin or that bitcoin is going to die you know just not recognizing that you know bitcoin more than likely is going to be here and be in a very very strong position in one year and five years and ten years is saying as just to me it's the same thing as saying that you don't think the internet is going to be succeeding and that you don't think people are going to be using the internet to do shopping or you don't think VR is gonna be you know, a big thing in the future either. And we're just hearing this echoed throughout the industry. Chamath, who's a former executive of uh, Facebook, is just continuing to make a bull case for Bitcoin. E-Trade is beginning the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange Bitcoin trading as of Tuesday evening. Uh, Peter Thiel's investment fund uh, now holds hundreds of millions of dollars in Bitcoin after making strategic investments, after placing key people inside the Trump administration. Uh, it's very, very interesting to see what's going on, to see the growth, to see the development that we've experienced in the past nine years. And it's going to be 
likely exponential that we're gonna see more, in my opinion, we're gonna see more development, more take place in this one next year than we have seen in all of the past nine years combined. Hang on to your seats, get ready for this ride. It's gonna be an exciting ride. Subscribe, like this channel. We have some really interesting things happening coming down the pipeline. We have our new studio and workshop space located in downtown Rochester, New York, where we are going to be kicking up our game and increasing the number of people who we are able to inform about Bitcoin, both at a global scale and at a local scale as well, because we need to do our parts to make our voices heard online, and we need to do our parts to bring attention and bring awareness to what's happening inside our local communities. Let it be telling our friends and family or getting our favorite local business to accept cryptocurrency. Uh, I would love to know, what do you think? What do you think about where we are going in 2019? 18. What do you think about Bitcoin adoption? And uh, what are you doing to make Bitcoin more interesting or to bring awareness to cryptocurrency? Or do you think this is all going to crash in 2018 is going to be the year that cryptocurrency goes away completely? I'd love to know what you think. Thank you for watching this content and learning about this information with me. Don't forget to tap that like button and subscribe. It encourages us so much and it helps other people find this content. Also, if you're interested in behind the scenes access, special rewards, and a direct connection with me and our crypto community, then become our patron at patreon.com slash mintingcoins or via our website at mintingcoins.com slash join. We look forward to connecting with you because together we are minting coins.